Hi, this is a quick um, introduction to Julie, um, which is a cloud-based um, technology for the collection, sharing, and analysis of data that's often electrochemical in nature. And I want to discuss how Julie can really um, accelerate um, biosensor in vitro diagnostics. So let me just, so Julie is essentially the platform and the backbone of this. And I want to describe how we use Julie to really accelerate um, ZP clients um, really to the market. So let me, um, so the mission at Zimmer and Pico, what, what is often happening is, you know, that, you know, there will be an incumbent, say, let's say technology um, for the analysis of a sample. So in the um, medical space, it could be a clinical analyzer for doing blood gas analysis, like glucose and oxygen, pH, sodium, potassium. It could be um, in the food industry, it could be HPLC, high pressure liquid chromatography. Um, in the f um, petroleum industry, it might be um, gas chromatography, mass spectroscopy. Um, but there are many um, lab-based systems that are really good at analyzing samples. But the problem is um, they're large, they're expensive, they require a lot of infrastructure in terms of you know, the lab, um, solvents, gas supplies, at least a master scientist, sometimes a PhD scientist, sometimes a gang of scientists to run these instruments. So what we're trying to do is we're at ZP and for our clients and collaborators is reduce this down to in-field point of care type tests. This is really the internet of things, you know, taking it's partly due to it's partly um, linked to internet things where we're taking historical clinical instruments and reducing it down to low cost easy to use um, sensors that will give you an immediate result in the field so you know do we want to do COVID-19 testing in centralized locations or do we want to do COVID-19 testing actually you know in the field and the quick answer is you want a quick result um, so in order to do that, we're using a system um, called Julie, and let me discuss um, Julie um, a little bit um, with you now as well. So let me describe a kind of, you know, a, um, it's not a very catchy title, but Cloud AI Assisted Biosensor Development. So Cloud AI Assisted Biosensor Development. So how we're using the cloud and AI in order to help us help our clients accelerate their biosensor development. So I'm gonna imagine a situation where somebody's trying to make a new blood test, but it could have easily been a test for chlorine in a swimming pool. But let me just let me just run with this. So we take this sample and we uh, test it. We take part of the sample and we test it and we get and we test it on a, um, a clinical instrument and we get what we call the reference, um, it's, it's, it's the reference method and it gives us the reference value. So if you're doing biosensor development and in vitro diagnostics development, it is super useful if a reference method already um, exists. It just makes everything so much easier. If you're trying to develop a new assay that nobody's ever done before, uh, then you've got nothing to compare yourself against which will be very useful when you actually get to market because you'll definitely have no competition, but it is more challenging, let's say, when you're doing development. And ZP does do those kind of programs, but they're just more challenging. So you've got a sample, you test it on the reference method, and you get the reference value. So that reference value, you know, for example, is the one that everyone believes. You know, so if it was for, if it was for chili, um, measuring the hotness of chilies, for example, that um, reference method would be um, HPLC and the reference value you would get would be, for example, 5,000 Scoville heat units SHUs. Um, now at ZP, we don't want to do it um, on a large instrument. You know, I'm just going to go and grab one of the kind of instruments I am referring to. No, we want to do it something on more akin to this. Um, something akin to this where you have you know, a little meter and you know, some sort of associated little um, sensor. Um, because it's ZP, these sensors are often electrochemical sensors. Which we, um, we are ISO 13485, so we're qualified for the development and manufacture of this kind of um, technology. And we do it as a service to our clients and collaborators. Now that instrument, um, I mean, this is an example, um, can make Bluetooth connection to um, a smart device um, now, at the time of writing this, I think 
we do we do have um, iOS apps. I'm starting to tend towards Android a bit more now. Um, but let me just say that we have the hardware and the sensor and we have apps. And now those apps are pretty, so those apps are in Bluetooth communication with the uh, meter. So the meter does the test, the result goes to the app and we get an app value. So let's remember the original um, sort of mission statement or problem. The problem was there's a reference instrument which gives you a reference value, but that reference instrument and reference that reference instrument could be you know a very expensive, non-portable, non-fast um, workflow. Whereas of course if you can take the set, you could take the same sample, just drop it on a sensor, get an instant result. You know that's much better. But we want the app value to be as close to the reference value as possible. Now, how do we do this at Zimmer and Peacock? You know, so we, um, people come to us um, and with, in collaboration with us, they'll develop a um, sensor and that sensor will be calibrated in order to um, give you a value that we believe is close to the reference value so that, you know, you essentially have accuracy. And um, when you're close to what you're trying to compare against, then, you know, that, that's, that's a measurement of accuracy. Now, how we actually, so, so what happens is this, we take the sample, we run it on the reference value, we also run it on one of the sensors that we might have developed for you. I'm not going to discuss the QR code, but we are able to, essentially, well, I am going to discuss it. We are able to send sensors out with QR codes, um, so that can carry calibration um, data with it, it can also carry um, batch numbers with it. So anyway, we take the sample, we test it on the reference value, but we also test it on the biosensor itself. Now this often happens in a clinical situation. So, you know, we're with the doctors and nurses, they'll get a patient in, they'll take a sample from the patient, they'll send it to the central lab, and they'll also put it on this sensor. And you know, so they'll get the reference value because it'll come back from the central lab, but they'll also then get an app value because they put the sample on the sensor, put the sensor, um, in the meter the meter does the result the result goes to the app they get app value they can write it down they can compare but what's also because we're now using um, essentially apps on smart devices we can send the raw signal to Julie and so if you ever follow ZP you know that um, we have a, um, a system called um, Julie it's free to open up an account on Julie um, and um, there we can send raw electrochemical data. So what that means is now we have actually another data stream. We have the reference value, which was obtained using the standard method on the sample. We have the app value, which was gained using the device that we'd made for you. But we also then are able to send the raw, raw signal off to the cloud. And that means that we end up with three data streams we have um, I'll just go back one we have our reference value which is let's say the you know the true value the app value which is um, what is our first sort of conv um, our first calculation of of turning raw signal into final concentration for example and then we also have the raw raw data up in the cloud because what we want is we want the reference value and the app value to be you know one to one you know if it's one millimolar in the reference value we want one millimolar on the app value if it's one ppm on the reference value we want um one um, ppm on the app value now if we're not getting that kind of correlation we can essentially look at the cloud signal and say what in our raw raw data is actually giving us a better indication of the reference value and then what we're able to do, because again, we're cloud-based and we're using smart devices, we're actually able to essentially use the AI in the cloud to say, how do I improve my app value? And it will basically look at the raw data, do some new calculations and send a new algorithm to the phone or to the smart device. And then that means that the smart device will get a better correlation between the app value and the reference value. So it's this.
If you want to accelerate your biosensor development and you're working with Zimmer and Peacock, um, then you can have real samples which you're testing using reference methods to get reference values. You can be testing the same sample on the biosensors that we are developing with you or you're developing and we're all collaborating on it. We can get that app value on the sample. You can have your reference sample on the, va on the sample but we're also sending the data to Julie where we're getting the raw signal. And then the AI in Julie will actually help us calculate new algorithms that can then be pushed to the app to actually improve the, the accuracy of the signal on the app. So it's like a, it's essentially a closed loop where we're getting better and better every time you give us a real, or every time a real sample is tested. So that is how Julie Cloud AI Assisted Biosensor Development works. And that's a, I mean, there's such a host of technologies there, but this is what Zimmer and Pico, this is why we're different. This is why we're not, you know, the screen printing or just the biosensor company. No, well, this is the sort of total solution to accelerate um, electrochemical biosensor and in vitro diagnostics development. So anyway, I hope that was interesting and um, I'll put some links and yeah, please reach out to us. Okay, thanks very much.